When it comes to the games as a service model, there are several legitimate concerns for players to have. One is the possibility that eventually, the game will just run out of content. For War Thunder especially, the addition of new content, specifically new vehicles, is a core component of the gameplay loop itself. You play vehicles to unlock new vehicles. If you finish one tech tree, you move on to the next. If the old tech tree gets new stuff, maybe you revisit it. Don't get me wrong, War Thunder is fun when you replay old vehicles, but when new vehicles are added to the game, people definitely become much more interested in it. Some people are genuinely concerned that eventually, Gaijin will run out of vehicles to add. I thought this idea was relatively isolated, but it seems like more people are starting to ask that question. I don't think it'll be much of an issue, and I'll try my best to explain why. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my sponsor. I'm partnered with Apex Gaming. They make pre-built PCs. If you're looking to upgrade, you should check them out. Link is in the description and comments. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. So why do people think they'll run out in the first place? I think it's because top tier MBTs are approaching the current day. A lot of nations have top tier vehicles from the 2000s or newer. For tanks like the T-80B VM and Type 10, they only entered service a few years ago. Some players likely think that sooner or later, the game will catch up, and there won't be any new vehicles to add. While this is true for certain nations, most other nations are still a bit behind. For example, the M1A2 is only from the early 90s, and the newest American vehicles from the mid-aughts. France may be caught up on MBTs, but they still have to catch up elsewhere. France's best ATGM vehicle is literally an AMX-13 with HOT strapped onto it. They can still add support vehicles like the SK-105A3. It's the same story with most nations. Besides, just because something is modern doesn't mean it's the best. I know that sounds a bit dull, but hear me out. In the late 80s and early 90s, a lot of nations began seriously improving their MBTs, trying to anticipate and counter next generation threats. However, the end of the Cold War meant that military funding was slashed, and these programs were abandoned. Anyway, many of these programs create very powerful vehicles. At least they are powerful on paper. The American CATTB is a great example. It was pretty much an M1A1 on steroids. Nearly every component was improved or changed in some way. It got a new diesel engine, hydro pneumatic suspension, tracks, fire control, automatic loader, composite, and last but certainly not least, a 140mm cannon. Apparently, it had twice the muzzle energy of the 120. At a meter and a half long, the complete round was nearly as tall as a person. In just 5 seconds, the autoloader could cycle a new round. As for the armor, it was equal to over a meter of RHA. Many nations had similar concepts. Object 195 is a great example. These could be the absolute top tier MBTs, maybe at around 13.0 or so. This would open up a lot of possibilities. There are some tanks that would normally be broken, but would be balanced fighting these. When people ask if Gaijin will run out of vehicles, I think they misunderstand why Gaijin keeps adding more and more modern ones. It isn't because they're working chronologically, and don't have any older vehicles to add. It's simply because modern vehicles bring in more revenue. For one reason or another, modern vehicles are more popular than older ones. Much more. Since their grinds are so painful, people are also more inclined to spend money on them. That's why it seems like every update, they just keep adding more top tier vehicles. There are still plenty of early Cold War vehicles that could be added. There are even a lot of World War II options that haven't been explored yet. If you look at the War Thunder forums, specifically the suggestion boards, you can find hundreds of possible additions. I've even made like 5 of my own. The issue isn't that they'll run out of vehicles, I think it's that eventually, they'll run out of interesting ones. Gaijin tries to add mainstream vehicles that people are already familiar with, or slight variations of mainstream vehicles. Eventually, they might run out of those. If that happens, you could see a decrease to interest in the game as a whole. Gaijin still has some options though. If things got really bad, they could change their stance on paper vehicles, though I can see how this would generally be unpopular. Personally, I don't mind the idea that much. As long as the vehicles are grounded in reality, and as long as their performance is concrete, I say go ahead. They could also add more minor tech trees like Israel. Trees that don't have vehicles for every BR range, but still provide a fun experience. Given recent events, I've warmed up to this idea. Adding one nation's vehicles to so-called parent nations can get messy, and in some circumstances, can be downright insulting. In most cases, the parent nation doesn't need more vehicles regardless. So to summarize, they won't run out anytime soon. It's not much of a concern. They still have plenty of vehicles to choose from, and even if they do run out, they can always expand their criteria. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.